Hi everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at some easy houseplants and these are houseplants that I think are probably really good for beginners and I'm going to tell you guys straight up that I have been putting off making this video for a very long time and part of the reason for that is that the term easy can be defined many many ways and I mean what's easy for me might not be easy for you and vice versa. So when I was picking the plants for this list today I really wanted to pick what I would define as unfussy or unfinicky plants because plants that are unfussy and unfinicky should be easier for a broader group of people in terms of taking care of them. So I came up with four very distinct criteria and all the plants on this list had to meet those criteria. So I'm going to go over what those four criteria are first and then we're going to start looking at some specific plants that would be good for you if you need easy, unfussy, unfinicky plants. So the number one criteria that I had on my list was around watering. I wanted to pick plants that were tolerant of occasionally being overwatered or occasionally being underwatered. These are plants that tend to bounce back fairly easily from those conditions. Now I do want to remind you that if you are just constantly overwatering a plant, it's probably eventually not going to bounce back. But these are ones that are going to tolerate the occasional misstep while you're learning and trying to adapt and get used to how to water plants correctly. Now the second criteria on the list revolves around humidity. I wanted to pick plants that do fine in any type of humidity. Doesn't matter if it's low, doesn't matter if it's high, these plants don't care because once again, these are what I call unfussy plants. So third criteria on my list was lighting. I wanted to try to pick plants that would work in a fairly broad range of types of lighting. That way you weren't having to worry about whether you were really having it in enough light or too little light or whatnot. And I will say that the range of acceptable lighting for some of these plants varies a little bit, but I'll explain that as we go along today. But the fourth and final criteria on my list, and this is the one that I think actually is going to make things super easy for you, is that I wanted to pick only plants that are extremely vocal when it comes to needing to be watered. These plants, you're going to be able to look across the room and be like, that plant needs some water. And that is going to make your life so much easier. It is going to make learning how to water correctly so much easier. And so all of the plants I'm going to show you today meet that criteria as well as the first three that we just discussed. So let's go ahead and start looking at some plants and we're actually going to be looking at five different genus of plants and we're going to be looking at multiple types of plants in each of those genuses or genera, genera, something like that. But we're going to start with the Epiprimenum genus and this is honestly probably the one genus that is on everybody's easy houseplant list because they are very forgiving, very tolerant plants. Now I do want to make a quick note, especially if you are new to the plant world, that these are often commonly referred to as pothos. However, another genus, Syndapsis, is also commonly referred to as pothos. Now while Syndapsis aren't exactly hard, they are a little bit more fussy in my experience than Epiprimenums. So if you are new to houseplants and that's why you're watching this video, I would definitely stick to Epiprimenums before you try a Syndapsis. And even more specifically, I would stick to Epiprimenum aureums. Now there are Epiprimenum pinnatums, which once again, still relatively unfussy, easy care plants, but I do find they're a little bit more finicky about watering, especially than the Epiprimenum aureums. So I'm going to focus on aureums today. If you try an aureum, once you feel like you got the hang of it, then definitely try an Epiprimenum pinnatum. Now I am going to flash up on screen here for you because she's just so big, it's hard to bring her in here and get her on frame. But this is my Epiprimenum aureum marble queen, which if you've been following me for a while, we've been looking at her a lot lately, but she is just a great example of an unfussy, easygoing plant. Now when it comes to epipriminums in general, and definitely epipriminum oriums, these plants really do like to dry out pretty much completely in between waterings. However, I will let you know that I have accidentally overwatered her a couple times in the past. She did get what looked like almost the start of root rot at one point, but she bounced back from it. And if I'm being honest with you, I didn't even have to give her a root rot treatment or anything. But basically I just started trying to make more certain that the soil was actually completely dry before watering again. And one of the things that's a huge help with these plants in that regard is that they are very vocal when they need water. So if the plant starts to look droopy or the leaves start to feel less rigid than they normally do, 
then you'll know that it's time to water the plant again. Now, I do wanna make a quick note that if you just watered that plant like three days ago and it's drooping like that, that probably doesn't mean it needs to be watered again. That actually could be a sign that you have overwatered it. But if you know it's been a significant amount of time since the last time you watered the plant and it starts to get less rigid leaves, they start to look a little droopy, they start to kind of curl in on themselves, then you know it is definitely time to go in and water that plant. Now, as far as humidity goes, this plant could care less about what the humidity in your house is. They don't care. I mean, obviously I've said it before, I'll say it again. All plants would probably prefer higher humidity. That's just kind of the natural environment they like, but this plant is not gonna throw a fit if it is in super low humidity. And epiprimidums are notorious for being able to handle almost any type of lighting situation you put them in. Now, low light is still going to be tolerant, right? Plants tolerate low light. Doesn't mean they love it. Don't go sticking this plant in a dark corner. It's not gonna survive but they can survive in lower light situations in your home. So for example, once again, I am in the Northern Hemisphere. So for most of the year, the lowest level of light coming in windows would be in my North windows. And this plant has lived in a North window its entire life and it's done fine. But overall, super unfussy, super unfinicky plant and lots of different varieties to choose from. So in addition to this Marble Queen, we have what is called the Golden Pothos, which as you can see, green with kind of this yellowish goldish speckling variegation on it. There's also what is called the Neon Pothos, which as you can see, called so because it looks almost like a neon yellowish green color, very, very beautiful. And there's also what is commonly referred to as the Jade Pothos, which is the all green variety of this plant. Now, in addition to these, we have actually seen a new variety of Epiprimidum aureum hit the market fairly recently, and that is what is commonly referred to as the Global Green Pothos. And as you can see here, it is a variegated form of this plant, but it is a different kind of variegation than what you've seen on the other ones I've shown you so far. The other ones we've looked at had kind of that speckling marbling variegation. This is more of a chunky, patchy variegation, and it is a green on green variegation. So very subtle, yet very beautiful. Any of these ones that I have shown you would be great if you're a beginner or if you're just somebody looking for an easy or unfussy, unfinicky plant. Now, the next genus of plants that I wanna take a look at today are actually philodendron and specifically heart-shaped philodendron. And scientifically, that's gonna be your philodendron heteroceum or your philodendron chordatum. And I have brought out my philodendron micans again today because honestly, this is like the smallest one I have and the easiest one to bring out to show you guys on camera, but it's also one of my favorite ones because of these beautiful velvety green leaves that come in with kind of that copperish coloring to it. Very beautiful. So this is another trailing plant like the epiprimidums that we looked at. But just so you know, the epiprimidums and these philodendrons can also be grown as climbing plants up some sort of pole, plank, whatever it may be. But these are also very unfussy plants. I think they're maybe a little bit fussier when it comes to watering, and I'll explain what I mean in a second, than the epiprimidums that we just looked at. But still very forgiving and very tolerant while you're trying to learn how to water correctly. So these plants typically don't want to dry all the way out like the epiprimidums do, but they still wanna dry pretty far out. I'd say anywhere from about half of the pot to three quarters of the pot. But this plant is also very vocal when it needs watering. It will go from looking nice and perky like this to kind of looking sad. And if it is a smooth leaf, so this leaf actually has a little bit of a rippling texture to it. I don't know if you guys can see. It's a little bit of a rippling texture to it, but if it was a completely smooth leaf, the leaf might start to look a little bit wrinkly or ripply if it's thirsty. And then the leaves have a tendency to kind of curl in on each other. And I mean under curl, not curl up, but curl down when they're thirsty. So that's gonna be a good sign that that plant needs to be watered. And once again, if it's doing that and you know you haven't watered in a while, then definitely that's how you'll know that it's time to go in and water. Now, as far as humidity goes, once again, None of my philodendron have had any problem with any level of humidity in my house, doesn't matter how low it gets. And they of course appreciate it when it is a little bit higher, but they're not gonna throw a fit if you have constant low humidity in your home. Now, as far as lighting goes, same situation is with those epiprimidum oriums. A lot of philodendron are low light tolerant. Once again, means they'll tolerate it, doesn't mean they necessarily love it, but they will work in a broad range of lighting types. Now I will say with all the plants I'm showing you today to be careful about putting them in direct light. You could 
experience some leaf burn. If you are getting direct light on them and that's happening, just pull them back from the window a few feet and see how they do. Maybe relocate them to a window that's not getting direct light. But in general, anything from bright indirect light to what is considered lower lighting will work for these plants. Now, as far as varieties go, we've seen the philodendron micans. If you're into all green foliage, here's what the philodendron chordatum looks like. That would be an excellent option for you. If you really like that whole neon look from that neon pothos earlier, then I would recommend what is known as the philodendron lemon lime, which as you can see, once again, has that kind of bright neon yellowish greenish foliage. And actually the foliage comes in kind of that lighter color and then it kind of turns into that greener color. So you always kind of have a nice mixture of those colors on this plant. There's also the philodendron Brazil. This is mine that you're seeing here. And this has that beautiful variegation. So kind of that darker green mixed in with some of that yellowish variegation in there. And these are the most common ones that you're gonna come across, but then there are a few more kind of very interesting ones that would also classify as unfussy plants. And that includes what is sometimes referred to as the philodendron silver stripe. Sometimes I see it labeled as a white stripe, but regardless, silver stripe or white stripe. And as you can see here, it has that stripe down the center of the leaf with that dark green surrounding it. There's also the philodendron rio. And as you can see here, I feel like this one has like a slightly more elongated shape to the leaves. But once again, green with some of that yellowish whitish variegation on it. And then there's something called the philodendron cream splash. And to me, this one looks more like the Brazil but instead of having that yellowish variegation, it has a more cream colored whitish variegation to it. And then there's the variegated version of just the all grain form. And as you can see here, kind of has that marbling speckling type variegation, somewhat reminiscent of that Epiprimanum aureum marble queen that we looked at earlier. But once again, lots of different options to choose from, but very, very tolerant, very, very forgiving excellent plant for those of you who are beginners. So the next genus of houseplants I want to look at are Spathophyllums, and this is what is commonly referred to as a peace lily. And the one you're seeing here, I believe it's called a Mauna Loa Supreme, if I remember correctly. And this is one of the largest varieties that you'll find out there. And it is just absolutely gorgeous with those big, broad, beautiful green leaves and those fabulous white flowers that peace lilies get, and just a super, super unfussy plant. Now, I will say when it comes to watering, uh, these plants do not like to dry out. They really do not like to dry out, but they are probably the most vocal plant on the list today that I'm gonna be showing you. These plants will droop all the way down. Those leaves will just go whoop, straight down, look completely sad the second that this plant needs watering. However, it is also very tolerant if you forget to even go look at it each day to see if it needs to be watered, or let's say, you went out of town and it was perky the day you left and then a couple hours after you left, it got unperky and you were gone for three days and you get back and you're like, oh my God, and you water it, it will bounce back. They are very, very forgiving plants. But as long as you go and look at them at least once a day, you're gonna be able to know when they need to be watered because they are just so vocal. Now, when it comes to humidity, once again, they don't care. They don't care what the humidity in your house is. They're fine with it, even if it's low all the time. They're cool. And just like with the epipriminums and the philodendron, they are also very tolerant of all range of lighting, even if it is a lower lighting situation. So you can probably try them out in many, many places in your home. But once again, just be kind of mindful if it's direct light to make sure that those leaves aren't getting burned. But like I said, this is a fairly large one here, but they do come in a broad range of sizes. If you are looking for a larger type plant, Sweet Pablo is another one that you could consider. Spathophyllum Sensation is another great option to consider if you're looking for a bit of a larger plant. I think these get to be about like four to six feet tall. If you're looking for a variegated option, Spathophyllum domino would be an excellent option for you. You can see here that kind of subtle variegation on those leaves, and this one does stay relatively smaller. There's Peace Lily Platinum Mist, which has kind of a silverish cast to it. And if you get really close up on those leaves, they kind of have a slight like stripe patterning to them. Very, very beautiful. And if you are down with stripes, there is also the Spathophyllum Silver Streak, which has this nice silver stripe running down the middle of the leaves. There is also what is known as Spathophyllum Little Angel. And if you are looking for a smaller one, this is actually a dwarf variety of peace lily. So this one is definitely going to stay nice and small and compact for you. Now, there are many more varieties of peace lilies, too many for me to cover for you today, but I do wanna make one note about the Spathophyllum Picasso. So this is a albo variegated peace lily. 
Albo variegated plants are a bit more complicated to take care of. So I would definitely avoid the Spathophyllum Picasso if you are new to plants. So the next genus of houseplants that we're gonna take a look at are what are known as Aglionemas, or more commonly sometimes referred to as Chinese evergreens. And I do have one of mine here to show you. And to be honest with you, when I bought this, it was not labeled exactly what kind it was. And I still am playing a guessing game trying to figure it out. At one point, I thought maybe it was just the Aglionema red. I'm honestly not sure. It could be a pink Dalmatian. There's a bunch of things it could be, but you can see it has this nice kind of reddish coloring and splotchy kind of variegation on it. And this plant is just super unfussy and very unfinicky, and I love him for that. But these plants, kind of like the peace lilies, don't really want to dry all the way out. They want to be kept a little bit more on the moist side. I'd say I probably let it get at least halfway dry through the pot before I go and water it again. But once again, very tolerant of an occasional overwatering or an occasional underwatering. And when this plant gets thirsty, the leaves will start to point down. And once again, the leaves will kind of curl under on themselves. So very vocal about when it wants water. If you know it's been a while since you watered it and you're seeing that, then definitely time to go in and water that plant. When it comes to humidity though, once again, this plant really doesn't care. Whatever humidity level it is, it's gonna be fine. And these plants are notoriously marketed as being low light tolerant. Once again, they'll tolerate it, they don't necessarily love it. But yes, they are tolerant of a broad range of lighting. Just be careful of that direct lighting, but pretty much can live almost anywhere in your home as long as it's getting some kind of light. Now, when it comes to varieties, there are so many diverse options when it comes to aglionemas. I'm gonna set this guy back aside. So I also own what is known as an aglionema marine. So as you can see, a much longer leaf, very lance-shaped, dark green foliage with the lighter green variegation patterning on it. And if you do like those longer lance-shaped leaves, there's also what is known as an aglionema cutlass. So you can see here, much narrower, much longer leaves. This still has kind of that, looks light green, but it's actually almost kind of silverish looking in nature. And if you do like silver leaves on plants, but maybe you don't like that narrow lance-shaped leaf, Aglionema emerald bay would be a good one to consider. As you can see here, much wider, kind of more ovalish shaped leaf, but has that beautiful silver middle to it. There's also the Aglionema tigris. And this looks kind of somewhat similar to Maria, except that the variegation is more of a striped patterning on it but still has that kind of longer lance-shaped leaf, that darker green with that lighter green colored variegation. Now these next two I'm gonna show you are quite fascinating. And let me just say that if you are new to plants and you were really attracted to certain types of calatheas, in particular the Calathea ornata, also known as the pinstripe calathea, which I'm showing you here. If you've seen this plant, maybe you've tried this plant, maybe you've struggled with this plant, the next two aglionemas I'm gonna show you kind of remind me of this plant, but they're unfussy and unfinicky. And so those are the Aglionema chocolate. And as you can see a kind of darker colored leaf here, it still kind of has that lance shape to it, but it has that pink lined patterning on it that reminds me of that pinstripe calathea. Now it is a lot longer of a leaf than that, but there is also what is known as the Aglionema rotunda. Rotunda? Rotundum. Rotundum, that's what it is. So as you can see, it has that lined pink patterning on it, that dark leaf as well, but this is more of a round leaf. So if you're attracted to that Calathea, but you have struggled with it, these are two Aglionema that I would definitely recommend giving a go. But once again, there are just far too many Aglionema varieties to really cover today. So just go Google Aglionema and get some scrolling going, and I'm sure you will find multiple types that you like. But the last genus I want to cover with you guys today are Syngoniums, and specifically Syngonium podophyllum. And podophyllum is what you're typically going to come across in most of your stores, but there are other types. So the other types, once again, are a little bit more fussy in my experience than the podophyllums, so we're gonna focus on those podophyllums today. And I have brought out my Syngonium podophyllum Glogo, and I absolutely love this plant. Now this is a vining plant, all Syngonium podophyllums are going to be vining plants, but they do tend to have more of a bush-like appearance when they're young, and they are easy to keep kind of trimmed into that bush-like appearance. But if you wanted to, you could let them trail, and you also could let them climb up a pole or a plank or something like that. But you can see how beautiful these leaves are. This is sometimes commonly referred to as an arrowhead vine, 
because of the arrowhead shape to those leaves, but absolutely love this plant. And these are really relatively easy to care for. Now they do handle drying out completely and these vines will droop down, like the whole vine will be drooping down, way down here whenever this plant is thirsty. So super vocal. But also I find they're pretty tolerant of an occasional overwatering as well. Now when it comes to humidity, I will say that I think this is probably the least tolerant of super low humidity on a long-term basis than some of the other plants but mine really has done fine. And I know people who live in much more arid and dry climates than I do that have had no real big problems with humidity levels in their home when it comes to their Syngonium podophyllums. And when it comes to lighting, I actually find that Syngonium kind of prefer to have not quite as bright of light. Now they will tolerate bright indirect light, but once again, I just feel like the further I take mine away from a super bright window, such as say a south facing window, the better they do. And the one that is performing the best for me has been living in a north facing window directly in the window its entire life. This one is actually living, let me look, I'd say that's about five feet back from a southern facing window in my living room and you can see it's fine. It's been pumping out tons of new growth since I got it, super happy. And that's really like, I have other plants I could not put in that spot like that would be way too low of lighting for them they would not like it but once again that's part of the reason i picked the criteria i did for these plants today is because i want them to be tolerant of any kind of situation that you might be putting them in while you're still trying to learn lighting and watering and everything else when it comes to caring for your plants but as far as varieties go let me set this gal back aside there are once again quite a few varieties of Syngonium podophyllums. Here you're seeing my white butterfly one. So these leaves come in kind of more of the variegated greenish color. And then as they mature and get bigger, they turn almost completely this like light, light green, almost white, hence why it's called a white butterfly. And there is actually what is known as a series of Syngonium podophyllums called the Illusion series. And these are supposed to stay more compact and small than the non-illusion series. And I do own one Syngonium that is an illusion series Syngonium. So I still am not quite sure exactly which one it is. This was only a two inch plant when I got it. It has now been moved up to a three inch pot and it has been taking off lately. And if you can see that newest leaf it put out up here has kind of a pinkish cast to it. This is actually making me think that this might be a berry illusion plant, but there are a few other illusion plants that get kind of that pinkish cast to them. I think maybe one of them might be called an Allison illusion, if I recall correctly, but it's some kind of illusion. So definitely a good one to check out if you want something a little bit smaller, but there is also the Syngonium confetti. So as you can see here, that lightish green foliage, and then it has these like pops of pink, like almost like pink polka dots all over it. There's also the Syngonium pink splash. So this is basically your all pinkish Syngonium. Then there's the Batik, and this is one of my favorites. So this has that very distinct green leaf with that white patterned variegation on there. And it maintains that pattern more so than like the white butterfly, because on the white butterfly, I feel like the leaves come in kind of looking like this, but then they fade into that solid color over time. This actually maintains that patterning a little bit more. There's also the Syngonium green gold. So if you're into kind of the green with the yellowish variegation, this would be a good one for you. And then there's this beautiful one, which is Syngonium moonlight. And I love how these leaves look so light and kind of like moonlight. And it, to me, it's kind of like this plant's leaves always look like what the white butterfly mature leaves look like, but just very, very beautiful, stunning plant. And another smaller variety that is not part of that illusion series I mentioned, but does stay smaller and more compact is what is known as the Syngonium Pixie. So another really good small option for you. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today and I hope it has helped you out with kind of deciding on some unfussy, very forgiving house plants for you to bring into your home. If so, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below and let me know if you own any of these plants already and if you also have found them to be relatively unfussy and easy to care for. Now I will be doing a video here soon on ultra fussy house plants. And if you're watching this video and that video has already aired, then you will be able to watch that next right here. Otherwise, YouTube is just gonna recommend whatever it thinks you wanna watch next here because that's what I told it to do. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha.